Slavery was abolished in New York State on July 4, 1799, with an act for the gradual abolition of slavery, which did not free anyone just yet. Just like the slave system divided people based on skin complexion, the abolishment freed people gradually based on other factors beyond their control and continued the United States tradition of enslavement through the mother, not the father. So, any child born after July 4, 1799 would technically and lawfully not be enslaved, but in reality would be enslaved to their mother's enslaver until they were 25 years old if a woman, or 28 years old if a man. As for people born before July 4, 1799, they were still enslaved, but were now legally called indentured servants. Until March 31, 1817, when New York State passed an amendment to an act for the gradual abolition of slavery, freeing everyone born before July 4, 1799, but not for another decade. So, on July 4, 1827, all enslaved people in New York State were free, except for those who weren't. The New York Slavery Records Index found that the 1830 census records 75 slaves in New York State. We believe that these are persons born to enslaved mothers some years after 1799, who were still completing their years of slave-like service required under the Emancipation Law. An example of this situation is that of Sojourner Truth. She was born into slavery in New York State probably in 1797, enslaved by Colonel Johannes Ardenberg in Ulster County. Rutgers University recently released information that Sojourner Truth was born into the family of Rutgers' first president, Jacob Rutsten Hardenberg, the brother of Colonel Johannes Hardenberg. So, Sojourner Truth was not freed by the 1799 law, but would be freed in 1827, and her enslaver promised to free her in 1826, but he didn't. So she left. The enslaver, a man named John Dumont, unlawfully sold Sojourner Truth's five-year-old son Peter to a southern enslaver named Fowler from Alabama. Alabama was part of what was called the Deep South, from where you can never find someone again. That was the belief at the time, and the accounts of enslaved people who never saw their parents or children again after one of them was sold show this to be true. Fortunately, the man who had sold Peter, a man named Solomon Gedney, was frightened when his lawyer told him he could get 14 years and $1,000 fine, about $30,000 in 2023 money. Sojourner's autobiography relates that Gedney secreted himself till due preparations could be made and soon set sail for Alabama. Steamboats and railroads had not then annihilated distance to the extent they now have, and although he left in the fall of the year, spring came ere he returned, bringing the boy with him. Of course Sojourner then has to fight to get her son, and have him not be property. After endless and tireless haranguing of authorities, she wins. But the cost to Peter was immense. He is scared of his mother, as the enslavers had indoctrinated him against northerners and anyone but the enslaver, and Peter is physically scarred from tortures that no one can or should endure. Back to the unfolding emancipation in New York State, an additional loophole after 1827 was that non-New Yorkers could travel to New York with their enslaved people for up to nine months at a time. A famous example is the amazing escape of Harriet Powell in Syracuse, New York in 1839, a story that will need an episode of its own. <laughs>